Remember how I told you Google Earth couldn't find me if I was dressed up as a 10-story building? Well, the next day, it could find me if I was dressed as a crack on a sidewalk. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best coming-of-age movies. I didn't think anyone noticed me. <laughs> well, we didn't think there was anyone cool left to meet. For this list, we're looking at live-action flicks that explore the themes and emotions that come with growing up. That means that animated films like Persepolis won't make the cut. What's your favorite coming-of-age movie? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Booksmart. Um, excuse me, ladies. Oh. There's a, Sorry. a party to get to. This one is an ode to the nerds and the geeks. As graduation day approaches, best friends Amy and Molly come to realize they didn't make the most out of their high school experience as they could have. So they decide to cram it all in on one night. Nobody knows that we are fun. We know. They need to know. Who is they? We are not one dimensional. We are smart and fun. As they journey through several different parties, they wade through physical intimacy, substances, power imbalances in their friendships, and the prospects of their futures. With stellar performances from the cast, a hilarious script, and a truly heartfelt and profound story, this one has become an instant classic. It was great, wasn't it? <laughs> Things are never going to be the same, but it was perfect. Number 19, The Way, Way Back. Hey, where have you been? Nowhere. It's a long time to be nowhere. Well, that's where I was. Now this one is a film for the loners. Duncan has a really hard time at home, with his mom being totally oblivious to the way her boyfriend verbally mistreats him. But when he starts working at the water park during summer vacation, he finally finds a place where he feels at home. There's a whole world out there for you, Duncan. Don't settle. Not yet. I don't have anywhere else to go. Anyone who's grown up feeling misunderstood by their family can understand the struggle to find people who truly understand you. It's the difference between the family you're given and the family you choose. Ladies and gentlemen, the first person ever passed up one of the water slide. <laughs> Number 18, Easy A. Olive Pendergast becomes the subject of something many teenagers deal with in high school, rumors. Lies travel fast. And boy, did my terminological inexactitude accelerate with velocity. <laughs> to help out a friend who gets picked on for being gay, she pretends to hook up with him in order to enhance his reputation with his classmates. But she simultaneously begins a decline of her own. People thought I was a dirty skank. Fine, I'd be the dirtiest skank they'd ever seen. Naturally, things get blown way out of proportion, and the boys in school start hiring Olive to say that they have also shared intimate experiences with her. This film manages to find the humor in such a dark situation while also depicting a faithful representation of the double standard between men and women of the time. While boys get praised for their conquests, girls get judged for giving it up. Screw all these people, Olive. Haven't you heard? <laughs> I already did. Number 17, Angus, Thongs, and Perfect Snogging. What makes this one so great is how relatable it is. Some parts of this movie can definitely be seen as over-the-top cringy. But let's be honest, growing up can be just like that. I don't want them to get too big. Otherwise, I'll end up with backbreakers like my mum or the queen. When you're not one of the pretty and popular, but more like Georgia, stumbling your way through life, things can feel seriously awkward. Whether it's trying to stand out to the person you like, dealing with the it girl, or navigating your friendships, this film is like a blueprint for it all. It was supposed to be a laugh, but boys don't like girls for funniness. Georgia faces the most embarrassing moments of her life and comes out on top. She is a champion for all us awkward kids out there. Wow, you're a natural. Really? Number 16, Juno. This film practically became a cultural phenomenon of its time, and for good reason. An understated but clever script combined with dynamic performances from the entire cast, not to mention a killer soundtrack, make this one of the best coming-of-age films of all time. Dude, I think it's best to just tell him. I'm pregnant. Although the subject matter might not be something everyone can relate to, the feelings of uncertainty and vulnerability are universal. As Juno navigates around the choice of putting a baby up for adoption to a couple, Mark and Vanessa, the teen learns that things aren't always what they seem, and that people can surprise you. The right person's still gonna think the sun shines out your ass. <sighs> 
That's the kind of person that's worth sticking with. And the complicated relationship Juno has with Polly is really sweet. Somehow through all the unpredictability, they manage to find their way. And I know people are supposed to fall in love before they reproduce, but I guess normalcy isn't really our style. Number 15, Dead Poet Society. Everyone has that one teacher that changed their life. In this movie, John Keating, played by the late, great Robin Williams, is that teacher. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. In a boarding school where structure and conformity are the norm, Keating teaches his students to seize the day and live the lives they dreamed. Unlike many of the other entries on this list, this one doesn't necessarily have an everything gets better happy ending. But that, in its own way, makes this one just as honest. Not everything works out for the best all the time. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Number 14, Rebel Without a Cause. This one is an oldie but a goodie. That's right. I'm cute, too. Move. <laughs> Jim is just trying to navigate his way through high school. And though these specific things Jim goes through, such as knife fights, games of chicken, and running away from home, might seem extreme to many, the general emotions are universal. I like you. You know that? Why do we do this? You gotta do something, now, don't you? Everyone has dealt with bullies. Everyone has dealt with peer pressure. Everyone has dealt with feeling misunderstood. Some younger viewers may feel it's harder to relate to an older film, but the themes here are timeless. It's a classic for a reason. All the time I've been, I've been looking for someone to love me, and, and now I love somebody. And it's so easy. Number 13, Love, Simon. There are many stories out there about teens overcoming the challenges of coming out to family and friends who reject them, and they are important stories to tell but this one's a little different. No, Blue, I haven't told anyone. And honestly, I can't even really explain why. Simon himself admits that he has a supportive circle of family and friends, but he still struggles with revealing his secret. Simon's story teaches us that just because things may seem easier for you on the surface doesn't make your journey any less valid. I shouldn't have missed it. No, hey, no. Ted. No, all the stupid jokes. I know you didn't mean him. It doesn't matter. I shouldn't have missed it. The metaphor of the Ferris wheel is so on point for growing up, and just for life in general. One moment you're on top, the next you're so low you can't see a way back up. But somehow, you find it. Are you disappointed that it's me? No. Number 12, Moonlight. Most coming-of-age movies are set in the character's teenage years, but this one transcends age. We see Chiron in three different stages of his life, from childhood to adolescence to adulthood. Part of what makes this one so interesting is that a lot of times in these films, we get to see the middle of the story. But here, as Chiron has to overcome his mother's substance use disorder and being mocked for his sexuality, we get to see his growth step by step. Should I cry so much sometimes, I feel like I'm gonna just turn to drugs. You just roll out into the water, right? It's worth noting that while many coming-of-age flicks deal with widely relatable stories, Moonlight is much more specific, but it still manages to feel empathetic to a wide audience of viewers. It also won Best Picture at one of the most memorable recent Oscar ceremonies of all time. Why are you looking at me like that for Number 11, Moonrise Kingdom. This one didn't get Academy Award and Golden Globe nominations for nothing. Not to mention a spot on the BBC's greatest films of the 21st century list in 2016. Remember, this isn't just a search party. It's a chance to do some first-class scouting. Camp may be an unforgettable experience. That is certainly true for Sam, Susie, and the khaki scouts of Camp Ivanhoe. What kind of bird are you? I'm a raven. Boys aren't allowed in here. I'll be leaving soon. After meeting, Sam and Susie want nothing more than to escape their lives and run away together. With all odds against them, they find a place to call their own. And though their story is bittersweet, the theme of young love is timeless. 
you never forget your first love. I think you've still got lightning in you. Let's jump. Number 10, The Edge of 17. You know what you need? You need someone to rob you so you can reenact Home Alone. That is, that is exactly what I need. Writer-director Kelly Freeman Craig has gone on record saying that her directorial debut was heavily inspired by the late John Hughes. And watching the film, it's almost as if you were watching a movie from the man himself. Haley Steinfeld stars as Nadine, a junior in high school who, after the death of her father at a young age and a slight backstabbing from her lifelong best friend, sees the world as being entirely against her. Bottom line is I have nothing in common with the people out there and they have nothing in common with me. With Steinfeld turning in an outstanding performance and snappy dialogue that hits all the marks of teenage conversation, this is one movie everyone should see at least once. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, wouldn't go that far. No. It's all right. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Number nine, the perks of being a wallflower. Welcome to the island of misfit toys. Based on director Stephen Chbosky's own novel, which could easily top any list of the best coming-of-age novels of all time, the 2012 film adaptation was named an instant classic upon release. Heavy hitters like Logan Lerman, Emma Watson, and Ezra Miller all turn in performances that speak to the troubles that face teens every day. If you knew the things that, uh, that were in my head most of the time, you'd know what it really meant. How, how much we're alike and, and how we've been through the same things. While the film does deal with some heavy subject matter, by the end, you'll be wishing you could spend a little more time with these characters. Of course, you'll also have David Bowie's Heroes on repeat as well. And in this moment, I swear, we are infinite. Number eight, super bad. Why are you talking about a plan? We've never discussed like any plan, but you keep saying we have a plan. I had like a general outline. Evan and Seth have been inseparable since childhood, and as their high school graduation approaches, they're forced to deal with the possibility of being apart for the first time. You're making me feel like I'm a bad guy. Like, what am I? I didn't do anything wrong. I got into a good school. In a hilarious, booze-soaked romp written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, the film perfectly captures the nuances of friendship, relationships, and partying. Lots of partying. Oh, and it is one of the most quotable films of the 2000s. How old are you, McLovin? Old enough. Old enough for what? It's a party. Number seven, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Wait a minute, there's no birthday party for you here. <laughs> this classic teen film introduced us to a plethora of now superstars. Jennifer Jason Leigh, Sean Penn, Forrest Whitaker, and more. Adapted from the 1981 book of the same name, this film follows a group of high school students as they go through the motions of growing up, touching on themes of sexuality, heartbreak, and drugs. Doesn't that stuff cause brain damage? Only if you take it like every day for a month, bitchin'. Hilarious and entertaining through and through, this film is full of the teen comedy tropes we know and love today. And who could ever forget that scene? Number six, Boyhood. There aren't many movies you can accurately say are wholly unique, but this is surely one of them. Richard Linklater's magnum opus Boyhood was filmed over a span of years between 2002 and 2013, revisiting the lives of his characters every year as they aged in real time. Because of the style of filming, the film has a sense of reality to it that a typical movie just can't hold a candle to. I just feel like there are so many things that I could be doing and probably want to be doing that I'm just not. It's a simple story without shocking plot twists or standout events, but rather a tale that feels similar to most people's real-life childhoods, filled with small highs and lows. I'm really happy that you're hanging out with us. Yeah. You too. Number five, Lady Bird. What can be said about Lady Bird that hasn't already been said amid the critical praise it received when it was released? I want to go where culture is, but like New York, the world did I raise such or at snob. least Connecticut or New Hampshire, well, where writers live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. This 2017 film transports viewers to 2002 and follows a high school senior in Sacramento who has named herself Lady Bird. Well, I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. It's a story that focuses on the mother-daughter relationship, as well as the female experience of growing up up and all the pains that come along with it. I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. What if this is the best version? 
It deals with tropes like applying to college and losing your virginity, but all that from an angle that feels fresh and modern despite the setting. Number four, The 400 Blows. Okay, so the movie itself is middle-aged, but hear us out on this one. The 400 Blows, released in France in 1959, is credited with completely changing the coming-of-age genre and making it what it is today. Rather than focusing on an idealized version of youth or childhood, this movie takes a more accurate portrayal of the life of a young Parisian boy. It's a simple story about a kid who makes bad decisions and has to deal with the consequences, but its realism is what really sets it apart. Number 3. Dazed and Confused Freshman, over here, right over here. Come on. Now. <laughs> this iconic teen comedy follows a group of teenagers on the last day of high school in 1976, and it still holds up today. With a stacked cast, including Ben Affleck, Matthew McConaughey, Mila Jovovich, and more, this film is Richard Linklater's love letter to teen angst, growing pains, and the 70s. The 50s were boring. The 60s rocked. In the 70s, oh my god, they obviously suck. Right? <laughs> Come on. So maybe the 80s will be radical. The film has become a cult classic, and arguably one of the best comedy films of all time. All right, all right, all right. Number two, Stand By Me. For many young people, watching this film is a rite of passage. Stand By Me is based on a novella written by Stephen King that, like the film, is set around four boys on a quest to find the body of another missing boy. Each of the characters has his own cross to bear, and throughout the film, they manage to touch on many issues like abuse, neglect, and mental health issues. The kids lose everything unless there's someone there to look out for them. This story is more about the journey than the destination itself, and throughout, Gordy, Chris, Teddy, and Vern learn about themselves and each other, coming out the other side completely changed. As time went on, we saw less and less of Teddy and Vern, until eventually they became just two more faces in the halls. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Breakfast Club Of course this one had to land here. John Hughes was the king of the classic American coming-of-age movie, having created beloved classics like Sixteen Candles and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, as well as this much-loved film. She's a tease. I'm sure, why don't you just forget it? The Breakfast Club is an iconic 80s movie that works at breaking down high school stereotypes by bringing together students from different crowds for a Saturday detention together. Jen? No! I never did it! they realize that they have much more in common than they could have imagined, and they all leave a little older and a little wiser. Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't, 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 don't you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.